In this video, we're going to go over truth tables and compound statements. A truth table is a method used to organize truth values. So essentially, a truth table is a table with different truth values. So let's go ahead and we'll make a table. In this truth table, we're going to go over the truth values for a statement P and the negation of that statement P. So we're going to have P and not P. We do not know what this statement P is. So this statement P could be true or it could be false. It's one of two options. So now the negation of P, if P was true, the negation would be false. And if P was false, the negation would be true. So this is a truth table for P and not P. So you label your statements in the top column, and then below you put the different options for those statements. Now, what is a compound statement? So a compound statement is two or more statements joined together. These statements can be joined by or, or they can be joined by and. Or and and have very different meanings. And we're going to go over and first. A conjunction is a compound statement formed by and. So we have a statement P and we have a statement Q. In symbols, we write P and Q. The symbol is sort of like an upwards caret or an A without the middle line. So when I think of and, I think of A and that's how I know the direction of the caret. P and Q. Let's go ahead and go over a truth table for that. So in this first column, we're going to have our statement P. In the second column, Q. And in this third column, P and Q. What are our different options for P? Well, P can be true, and Q can both be true. We could also have P is true, and Q is false, or P can be false, and Q can be true, and there's one last option between the two, is if they're both false. So when filling out this truth table using these two statements, we just go down the line the, listing the different options or the different possibilities between the two. So they can both be true, one can be true, one can be false, vice versa, one can be false and one can be true, or they can both be false. So the T and the F stand for true and false. So in order for P and Q to be true, both have to be true. So if P is true and Q is true, then P and Q is true. If P is true and F is false, then both P and Q cannot be true, so they're false. If P is false and Q is true, P and Q is still false because we need to have both of them true in order for the conjunction to be true. If they're both false, then there's no way it can be true. So looking at this, we can see that a conjunction is true when the statements are true as well. So the conjunction is true when statements are true as well, and that only occurs at our first option, when P is true and Q is true. So now we understand what AND means, let's go over what OR means. So a disjunction is a compound statement formed by the word OR. 
So our two statements, P or Q. In symbols, it's P and then a downward carrot, Q. So almost like a big capital V. And let's go over the truth table for this. So we're going to start with our statement P, then Q, and then P or Q. So like our previous table, we're going to do the options. P can be true and Q can be true. They can both be false. P can be true and Q can be false. Or P can be false and Q can be true. Now, or is true if one or the other statement is true. So if P is true and Q is true, P or Q is true. If P is true and Q is false, we still have at least one truth. So P or Q would be true or false. We still have that true in there. So that disjunction is true at this point. P is false and Q is true. Still, one of them is true. Therefore, P or Q is also true. And then the last one, P is false and Q is false. So neither one of them are true. Therefore, P or Q is false. A disjunction is true. So it's true when at least one statement is true. Let's go over an example where P and Q are actual statements. P is I have a dog and Q is I own a car. So if both those statements are true, then I have a dog or I own a car is true and I have a dog and I own a car is true. If I have a dog but I don't have a car, I still either have a dog or I own a car because I at least have that dog. But if I have a dog and I don't own a car, then technically I don't have a dog and own a car. That's why P and Q are false. If this statement is false for me, Q, I don't have both. Therefore, it's false. If I didn't have a dog, so if this statement was false for me, and this statement was true for me, that I owned a car, so we're looking at the third row, then when it says I have a dog or I own a car, I do at least own a car. Therefore, that statement is true. But when you look at P and Q, I have a dog and I own a car, that's false because I know right here it says I don't have a dog. And then finally, we're going to look at if both of them are false. So if I don't have a dog and I really don't own a car, they're both false. So P or Q says I have a dog or I own a car. Well, that's false because I don't have a dog or I also don't have a car. So neither one of those are true. That's why this disjunction is false. And then looking at this last box, P and Q is going to be false because I don't have a dog and I don't own a car. And they're both false. Just remember for a disjunction, at least one of the statements has to be true in order for the disjunction to be true. Whereas with a conjunction, both statements have to be true in order for the conjunction to be true. Otherwise, it's false.